Now let's get into some of the rude and entitled behavior we've seen from Meghan and Harry. I mean, you've probably already seen a lot at this point, but there's way more. In 2018, there was a trip to Australia, and there were rumors that Meghan threw hot tea at staff when she got angry because they didn't do something well enough. In 2018, she hadn't even been with Harry that long, but she made herself right at home because she was bullying the staff, and they even launched an investigation into the allegations. There were reports that Meghan left behind a lot of broken people. But of course, Meghan says that the palace is using the media to peddle a false narrative. She actually had a 16-day tour in Australia, New Zealand, and I guess Fiji and Tonga. It was with Prince Harry for just a few months after their wedding. The Australia tour is one of the most important in the royal world, but there have long been allegations of issues she had with staff. Some of the claims include that Meghan became upset at being given only a wing of the home of the Australian Governor's General's official Sydney residence. So this big guy's mansion, she's given a wing of it, but she wants the entire house. And of course, on one occasion, she reportedly lost her temper and threw a hot drink on them. Like the, like what? That is crazy. That's like Zeus bad girl's material, like not royal family behavior. Much has been made of the allegations that Meghan bullied her staff at the palace. From what you've researched, does that fit her personality type? Well, absolutely, because her conduct towards uh, the crew, an 80-man crew in Canada when they were filming an advertisement for Reitman's, a chain store in Canada, was an example of aggressive behavior towards the whole crew and I discovered a pattern which fitted into the behavior which the palace staff accused her of also bullying. This report claims that the trip highlighted the gulf between the reality of royal duties and the expectations that Meghan had. She said palace life is different than what people imagine it to be. Like boohoo Meghan, it's so much harder to be like a princess than not. When Meghan discovered that there were hundreds of people waiting outside the house to welcome the newlyweds, Meghan reportedly said to the team, what are they all doing here? It's silly. The source told the Times that Meghan was informed they're here because they admire and support a monarch and an institution that you're representing. They added that Meghan just didn't get it. A reporter for the Daily Mail claimed that she was on the scene and she witnessed Meghan turn and hiss at a member of her entourage, clearly upset set and full of rage about something and demanded to leave. She said, I saw that same female, highly distressed member of the staff sitting in an official car with tears running down her face. Our eyes met and she lowered hers, humiliation etched on her features. So, oh, poor girl, they like, just yelled at by Megan and it just doesn't sound like you can please her. Of an agent who was trying to help her who just said that Meghan was undoubtedly the worst person he'd ever had to work with in his whole of his life because she bullied him so mercilessly. So there is this aspect to her. She smiles and she's charming and does have the appearance of being benign philanthropist, but in reality, she is tough and tough in her own interests. What I don't admire is the treatment of people on the way, so you, which was vicious. And that is all part of narcissism. She's a very selfish, self-promoting person who really takes no, no hostages and is quite determined that what Meghan wants, Meghan gets. One of Meghan's personal aides, Melissa, actually retired one month after the tour. So it sounds like the trip to Australia from hell. And I guess there's a Sussex Survivors Club who were the people driven out of the palace by Meghan. Like she was so terrible that a lot of people quit. There was a lot of turnover and they had a, like a survivors group. A woman named Samantha who was an assistant private secretary to the Queen and was on Harry and Meghan's itinerary, uh, also left her post in 2019. With these people leaving their jobs, that's a real thing. At the end of the day, the palace is a business. So if there is a lot of turnover, there's going to be an investigation into it and they're going to figure out the truth. Those bullying charges against Meghan Markle aren't going anywhere. Valentin Lowe, author of Courtier's Intrigue and Mission and the Power, players behind the House of Windsor, tell page six exclusively that the palace aides who quit, claiming they were bullied by the suits alum, are sticking to their guns. Quote, the people I spoke to are absolutely still sticking to their story, claiming that Megan bullied them, he says. Continuing quote, I can't speak to the truth of that, of course, because I wasn't in the room and I haven't heard Megan's side, he continues, continuing quote, but my sources still very much stick to their story. 
Days before Markle and Prince Harry's explosive 2021 sit down with Oprah Winfrey, the Times of London alleged that the Duchess of Sussex occasionally reduced staff members to tears while they lived at Kensington Palace. Two senior members of the palace staff were allegedly bullied into leaving their jobs, the UK newspaper reported. Quote, I am very concerned that the Duchess was able to bully two PAs out of household in the past year. The treatment of X was totally unacceptable. Continuing, quote, the Duchess seems intent on always having someone in her sights, Knopf reported. Continuing, she is bullying Y and seeking to undermine her confidence. We have had report after report from people who witnessed unacceptable behavior towards Y. Now you guys know the media loves to talk about the royals, so as soon as they heard about this survivors club, everyone was all over it. And anyone who had any knowledge of Meghan acting this type of way went to the press and just solidified it, which I think is a big part of the reason why nowadays just people don't like her. There's like so many events and like this was a damning part. How are you going to have all these people work for you? for free, like you're not paying them and you treat them this way. And is it true that a number of the courtiers who work with her call themselves the Sussex Survivors Club? Absolutely, um, yeah. Um, and it, it, what, what did they survive? I mean, uh, it, it was a very difficult experience for some of them. I think, as I revealed a couple of years ago, last year, mm. there was um, allegations that Meghan bullied staff. I mean, there was, people talked to me of... Um, people being completely destroyed. Completely destroyed. Imagine having a job that completely destroys you. If you do, that is not the position for you. And I totally get it. Like work is so difficult, but like completely destroyed. Like I hope these people get some like therapy after. Melissa, who worked as Megan's personal assistant, also worked for Robbie Williams and Madonna. Robbie Williams. Hmm, I know Robin, but Robbie Williams. Anyways, she was part of the team that helped with their wedding in 2018. And of course, she quit working for Meghan just after six months. Samantha, as I mentioned, was an assistant private secretary for the Queen. She reportedly wanted to quit Buckingham Palace in 2018, but stayed on to help Meghan as she joined the Royals. But then once she became Harry and Meghan's private secretary, she was out. Samantha was head of HR and she worked with the family until 2019 where Megan pushed her overboard. <laughs> Not literally, but she just couldn't emotionally handle it anymore. Jason started working for the Royals in 2014. He actually was a crisis management expert in the past, but even that couldn't help Megan's case. Jason's interesting because he's the guy that read over the letter that Megan sent to her father. He worked for both uh, Kate and William and Harry and Megan until their offices separated because of that future. Feud. Then he really started to work with Megan until he couldn't work there anymore. But now he is the boss of William and Kate's charity foundation, so he clearly picked a side. Now because these people were leaving their jobs, there was the Royal Probe, where the Queen launched this investigation into Megan's bullying. The palace released a statement saying they were very concerned and won't tolerate harassment. Megan said she was saddened by the claims and she denies them all. There's another story that is so ridiculous that I need to talk to you guys about. I mean, here's the kind of people we're dealing with. In 2018, there was an engagement interview. They said they had proposed when they were roasting chicken for dinner, but months later, it was published that Megan had verbally abused palace staff because she's vegan and could taste egg in some dish. Remember I said earlier in this episode that their engagement was rehearsed and planned? Doesn't sound like it went down that smoothly. Now, Megan's got an interesting relationship with food, which I get a girl, but she's a little bit more particular than I am because she went to go taste some food for her wedding reception. And she said that there needs to be macrobiotic macro alternative dishes for some Hollywood star guests who follow the diet of Zen Buddhism. Okay, interesting. Never heard of that before. Megan got really upset when she felt like she could taste egg in a dish when she was told there was no egg in there, which, what does egg taste like? I feel like egg tastes like whatever you put on it. But she said, no, I can taste it. There is egg in this dish. A source said, I think there was a bit of an upset when suddenly the queen walked in because of course, this was the castle, this is her home. And she quietly took Megan to the side and said, Megan, in this family, we don't speak to people like that. I feel like you know you're in trouble if the queen is telling you to behave. It's like like way worse than the teacher telling you to like, you know, be quiet and pay attention. It's like, this is the Queen of England and she has to tell you how to behave. At the wedding, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle had a largely vegan menu. When we planned on the wedding, Meghan Markle was angry at the caterer for putting some egg in a soup that was supposed to be vegan. Where Meghan Markle acted a little bit too angry and said, do you even know what vegan is? Which seeing that angered Queen Elizabeth who's worked with that catering staff for years. It was overheard that Queen Elizabeth was angry with Meghan Markle and told her we don't talk to staff like that. 
And it seemed like Megan wasn't shy about her nasty rage that she had against the staff. Megan reportedly had a falling out with Kate, her sister-in-law, over the way that Megan spoke to her staff. They had Christmas together in 2017, and Kate was shocked at how Megan talked to people. These two did an entire interview with Oprah to talk a little bit about these allegations and how Megan says that she is innocent, despite with like three people resigning and them all blaming her. Plus, this trip to Australia involved so many others that news reporters, you know, they even gave their statements because you could tell she was not being kind. Which is all really insane to me because how are you bitter and upset when you are dating and then marrying a prince? You've now got a huge career where you are getting a ton of money. I just don't know why she would not appreciate the moment. I feel like Princess Diana really appreciated every opportunity she had and she didn't follow all the rules, but she like when she broke them, she was like not malicious or being nasty mean. She didn't need like an, a, a bullying investigation. Then another issue happened after Harry and Meghan were married where Meghan Markle didn't like their trip to Australia. Then Meghan Markle told her coordinator she wanted to reduce her appearances saying it was too much work and she should be getting paid for doing this. Which to be clear, Meghan Markle was collecting money from this because Prince Harry at the time was receiving funds from the Crown Estate, which is a public-private partnership where the royal family makes money. And one of the final straws was when Meghan Markle yelled at one of her coordinators saying if she had the power to fire her she would. And Prince William was there who apologized to the coordinator who said she was doing a good job while she was crying. So maybe there was some mistreatment but there's more to the story than their story with that. Now you guys know an investigation is an investigation and it does end. The palace concluded its investigation into the allegations made by Meghan's former staffers but did not make the findings public. Meghan was probably really happy that they did not make the findings public. Um, I feel like it's interesting because uh, Make the findings public. What did you find? I mean, I feel like the best answer would have been like, oh, there was nothing found. But you guys know the palace, like they try to operate and I mean, it seems like I was going to say decent faith. I don't even think that's the case. But the fact they said that they were not releasing the findings opposed to no findings. I mean, I take away something from that.